praise the Lord this morning. We come to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Praise God. Come on. Let the presence of God touch your heart this morning. Worship the Lord with us this morning. Oh. Living in the overflow. Covered by your love. Moving in the Holy Ghost. More than enough. Walking in your freedom now. Sing the healing power. We have been changed. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, I am living in the overflow. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, I am living in the overflow. God, you are the sovereign one. I'm 
best I can. Lost a million dollars, shed a million tears. When I come to you, you're gonna hide me up, and I don't have no fear. of the Lord. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand cup of praise. And give him the glory this morning. Amen. Let's go to the throne room of heaven right now. Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. Lord, we pray and ask that you administer, Lord, in needs and lives this morning. Lord, God, you heard these names, Lord. God, you know every prayer need this morning, Lord. God, his hands that were raised across the sanctuary. Lord, we pray together today, God, in faith, believing that you are well able, Lord, God, to touch in the needs, Lord. God, you know this family, Lord. God, and what they're dealing with, Lord. God, you know our sister in rehab. God, I pray that you touch her life, Lord. God, strengthen those muscles. God, bring your members, Lord, into submission to the will of God in her life. Lord, I pray that you would bless today. God, everyone, this baby, Lord, I pray that you touch this little baby and minister healing, Lord. God, I pray that you begin to touch those kidneys. God, and the sister that has kidney difficulties. Lord, I pray that you would heal and restore this morning. Let the power of your Holy Spirit begin to bless, Lord. God, first and foremost, God, anyone here that might not know you as their Lord and Savior, Lord, that healing of the soul is so important. I pray that you would bless them, Lord. I pray that you would reveal your hand, Lord, in their lives to let them know the love and the mercy and the grace of God in their lives. Come, Lord Jesus, now. Let your Holy Spirit fill this place. Come on, saints of God. Let's invite the Holy Spirit in the presence of God into this house this morning. Lord God, come. Fill this tabernacle, Lord. We welcome your presence, oh Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, today we pray right now. Right now, Lord. Ask your King. You singing over me. You have been so, so. 
so good to me. Jesus. I took breath, you breathed all I believed. You have been so, so
thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, I have a glory. 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 Oh, just let your heart, let your heart flow to him this morning. I love you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. All my words for sure. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. I've got nothing new. Jesus.
and let me this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That word that is in any language. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and the Lord of glory. Hallelujah to Jesus. Lord, we are thankful for your blessings, O Lord. For your blessings, O Lord. Jesus, we give you praise and glory. We give you honor this morning. Honor, oh God, we can't give enough. But God, you have blessed us richly. We love you, Lord. We praise you this morning. Glory. Oh, can somebody say glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. into your life 
that I have promised. I will fulfill my promises in your life. Look unto me and see that I am at work. Oh, that you may not understand, you may not know, but I am at work in your life. I am at work in your ministry. Know that I will allow my presence to flow through you if you will heed my voice today. Heed the voice of the Lord and know in this hour you can trust in me, saith the Lord. Glory. Come on, somebody give me praise in the house this morning. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, musicians. Glory, glory, glory. Mm. Oh, he's in the house this morning, church. Yes. We see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Evident this morning, according to that 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. The manifestation is a, the manifestation as we call, the scripture calls it. It's the way of God revealing Himself. Praise the Lord. You know, I was, I'm trying to get into the 21st century here. <laughs> trying to, to, to preach, and the pastor's not tech savvy. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and tell you that. God gave me a wife that is tech savvy. <laughs> And I use this computer 15, 20 times a day. I use it seven days a week, probably 365 days a year, doing sermon prep, doing my office work. And all you have to do is hit the button. It comes up. You add your code. I hit that button four times, and it still didn't come up me in this pulpit. <laughs> Can you say amen? amen. <laughs> Praise God this morning. But you know what? The title of my message this morning is Practice Thanksgiving. Yeah. How many of you know this week what holiday it is? That's right. Thanksgiving. 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 Come on. Amen. Amen. Thanksgiving. Praise God. We are blessed. Yes, we are. Praise the Lord. I, I think I got my, my work cut out for me this morning. <laughs> but you know what? God knew you was going to be here. Good to see Sister Annie's son in service with us this morning. Praise God. God bless you this morning. You know, turn with us to Philippians, the fourth chapter, if you will. Or they'll have it on the screen here. You know, as we see God working in our lives. God tells us to be anxious for nothing. How many know what nothing is? Come on. He's telling us not to be anxious about anything. Come on. We need to understand anxiety is gripping society today. I said anxiety is gripping hearts and souls of individuals. But he says in everything. Everybody say everything. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Come on. He's given us the key and the answer to our problem, church, in everything that we go through and everything that we deal with. He's telling us in the midst of it all that we are to give thanks. He's talking about thanksgiving, church. Come on, when we thank, we talk about the holiday. We want to think about turkeys and ham and, and all the trimming. But he's talking about giving thanks. Amen. Thanks. 
give in. Let that sink in, church. Have we allowed our hearts to, to be gripped by all the anxieties and problems? Uh, we need to practice uh, thanksgiving. Uh, and that's the title of my this message this morning is practice. Uh, because church, we need to practice, practice, practice. Uh, we need to get good at giving thanks. We need to practice it and get good at it. We need to get better at it. Can I get an amen? Come on, elbow your neighbor and say he's talking to you. Come on. You and I need to practice. We need to get it in our hearts and in our souls. We need to become a regular in our thought process, in our way that we live every day. We need to get that heart that is thankful in everything, church helpful idea to use the alphabet to help to give thanks. You know, I, the letter A, I, I think of my little grandbaby Addie. She's up here at the office every day with, with us and I was telling someone before church, she keeps us in stitches because let me tell you, she is the honest, most honest soul you'll ever meet. Right. <laughs> She's three years old. If it comes up, it comes out. Amen. You and I need to understand the church. That's a blessing. The Bible says that laughter doeth good like a medicine already. She's doing medicine to my soul, keeping me laughing. And, and, the, and the, might I say, also keeps me exercising. <laughs> if I watch her, let me tell you something. She's high maintenance. You're going to have to keep up with her. You've got to look out. Don't ever take it for granted. But church, that is a blessing to me. We need to know and thank God for the blessings in our life. And, and we think of B, and I, I can I can think of, of, of those in the church, Miss Bonnie and Brother Bill. And all I can think of this, these uh, around, and I think about these as we begin to think. And we think, what, what do we have to thank God about? And we can use this as an idea of again, and I think a C and don't forget my Cindy. <laughs> Amen. And I know she's a blessing to me. Come on somebody. <laughs> we need to understand these things in our life and what they are. <laughs> Come on or you can just say candy. <laughs> How many of you like candy? Thank God for candy. Praise God. Holiday season. Divinity and all of these things. Oh we need to give God thanks in our life because we're blessed and we need to remember that because we get so overwhelmed with anger anxiety in life but we are a blessed people church we need to practice 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 thanksgiving in our hearts and lives we need to understand have you ever heard of Chet Atkins let me tell you something church he practiced he practiced playing that guitar when everybody else may have been watching TV have you ever heard of Michael Jordan come on somebody I tell you that boy didn't become good at basketball Ball by sitting on a couch somewhere. That's right. He practiced. We need to understand this. Uh, Nick Saban. Uh, I'm not an Alabama fan. Uh, come on somebody. I know what they some in here, but that coach uh, didn't get me good at coach uh, by just sitting at home watching games. Uh, he practiced at it. Uh, he got good at it. Uh, you and I need to understand we need to get good at praising the God. Give it him glory. We need to get good at giving thanks unto him. Yes, amen. <laughs> Those around us those around us every day, do they dread to be around us because of, of being a sourpuss? <laughs> Come on. Or have we got a heart of thanksgiving that is contagious? <laughs> I said a heart of thanksgiving, church. Have you ever understood that practice uh, has to be done to get good at something? Uh, and I'm telling you to be thankful. Uh, we need to practice it more and more in our lives, church. Uh, many people don't want to hear the truth. Some don't want to even try. Hey, there's a one young man went to the doctor. You know, he's complaining he couldn't do this. He couldn't work. He had all kinds of problems in his life, everything. So he went to the doctor, and the doctor run all kind of tests on him. And the doctor finally comes and says, says, come on, doctor, give it to me straight. Don't hold back. Tell me the truth. He said, everything looks great. He said, you're just lazy. <laughs> He said, okay, doctor, give it to me in some scientific 
mean some terminology I can go back and tell my family. <laughs> Come on. Some of us don't want to hear the truth. I said some of us don't want to hear the truth. We need to understand the Word of God is truth. I said the Word of God is truth. We need to practice. We must practice, church, thanksgiving, giving praise and edification and encouragement. Practice, practice every day. We need to get it in our spirit, get it in our soul. It needs to become contagious in us. Every day, the Scripture often uses that word, edification, which means, church, to instruct or improvement of a person morally or intellectually. It's speaking of coaching or cultivating or mentoring. Because I can tell you, your children are watching what you do. Amen. Your kids, your grandkids, you are training them up in the way. And not necessarily the way they should go. Woo, come on somebody this morning say amen preacher amen. good preacher <laughs> we need to understand this morning church God's word will not lie to us he's telling us be anxious for nothing anxious for nothing but in everything come on somebody can you give God praise in the house this morning amen. let your request be made known to God I'm telling you this morning, church, in the midst of everything that we go through in our life, the more you practice, the better you will be at something. Can you say amen to that? Amen. First Corinthians 14 and 12, it says, Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be to, for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Did you hear that? Let me go ahead and put that down in layman's terms. If you've got a thankful heart, it's going to spill over into the church. I said, if you've got a thankful spirit, he said, it's for the betterment of the church. He said, if you got that spirit. He says, folks, well, want what you got and the church will excel. That's the promise of God. We need to understand church in our hearts and in our lives what God wants to do. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. I want you to see that. I wish they could magnify that. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. You need to underline that. You need to say, oh me, God help me. Our lives, church, what we speak, what we say church he says but what is good for the necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers that amplified version says it this way <laughs> don't let unwholesome foul profane worthless vulgar words ever come out of your mouth Who shout amen or oh me God help me this morning, church. He says, but only such speech as is good for building up others. That's what that word edification means, church. It's for the good of building others up according to the need and the occasion so that it may be a blessing to those that hear you speak. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I want to be a blessing to you. I want to be a blessing to my neighbor. I want to be a blessing to my kids. I want to be a blessing to my grandkids. Hear me this morning. We've got to practice, church. What you practice, you'll get better at doing. There are two basic attitudes in my church. Church, to give or to take which are you are you a giver or a taker Ephesians 5 and 4 says neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks that amplified version says let there be no filthiness or silly talk or coarse or obscene or vulgar he's talking about joking but he says because such things are not appropriate for believers Woo, shout now. It's not appropriate for believers, he says. 
But instead, speak of your thankfulness to God. Oh, God is good. Come on, somebody. I said, ain't God good? I said, ain't God good? And all the time. Amen. We need to understand the blessings and the goodness of God in our lives and let that overflow in us. Count your many blessings. When on a short-term missions trip, Jack Hinton was leading worship at a leopard colony on the Isle of Tobago, which is in Trinidad there. It says a woman had to been faced, facing away from the pulpit and turned around. He said it was the most hideous face that he'd ever seen. He said that that woman's nose and her ears were entirely gone. That leopard colony, leprosy had eat away. But he says that she lifted up a fingerless hand, lifting it in the air, and she asked, can we sing, count your many blessings? <laughs> Overcome with emotions, Hinton left the service. He's followed by a team member that said, I guess you'll never be able to sing that song again. He looked at him and says, oh, yes, I will. He said, but I'll never sing it the same way again. <laughs> I can tell you that church, you look around and there's folks that are worse off than you are. In your worst of circumstances, there are folks that are a whole lot worse off than you and I are. We are blessed, praise God. Come on, somebody. Do you understand this morning, church? Philippians 4 and 6, be anxious for nothing. Do we understand? But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. I'm telling you this morning, we're blessed, praise God. God. Got to remember that, please. That God is good. Don't worry about anything He says. That living virgin says, pray about everything. Tell God your needs. And don't forget to thank Him for His answers. And that message version, I like this. Don't fret or worry. <laughs> We're good at that, aren't we? Don't fret or worry. Instead of worry, pray. Let petitions and praise, let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. If we prayed about things a whole lot less than what we complained about them. Amen. I'm telling you, my God. I said, my God. He is well able. What do you practice more of? Giving or taking? What do we practice more of? Church Thanksgiving is gratitude given and directed towards God, to family, to our fellow man. That Thanksgiving church, it's that gratitude in our heart. I'm telling you, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says in everything, give thanks. Come on. He said in everything, uh, give thanks, uh, for this is the will of God. He says in Christ Jesus for you, uh, this is God's will for you, he says. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, church, Thanksgiving must be a central part of our worship. Uh, come on. I, I said it must be a central part of our worship. Uh, and I'm not talking about just inside of these four walls. Uh, I'm talking about attitudes. Uh, everyday church. Uh, thanksgiving in our heart. Uh, the psalmist says in that 100th psalm in verse 4, enter into his gates uh, with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Uh, be thankful unto him and bless his name. I want to ask you, how did you come into the church this morning? I said, how did you come into the house of God this morning? God help us all. He says, enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thanksgiving and praise have a direct connection to the throne room of God. I'm telling you, church, there's where he's telling us 
It says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is the will of God. All of these things, church, as we approach God, we should come in an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. That attitude uh, to give thanks. As First Chronicles 16 tells us, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. Did you hear that, church? Uh, what is He talking about? He said, tell somebody what God's done for you. Tell somebody what the deeds of God has done for you you. Uh, let this neighborhood know that God's been good to you. Uh, I'm telling you, my God is a good God. We need to let folks know about that. We need to share it. Give thanks. Uh, let people hear that heart that is thankful. First Chronicles 16 there. Verse 34, he says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Did you hear that church? He says, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the people. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For He is good. His mercy endureth forever. And the Psalms 50 and 14 says, offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. I'm telling you, my God, this morning church is in control. Yes, offer thanks before you eat. Yes, we need to do that uh, Jesus offered thanks uh, before he broke bread yes uh, but hear me this morning church uh, how wonderful would it be to remember God and give thanks every hour of the day I'm telling you when we sit down at the table we give thanks but what about when we get up and we're full come on Deuteronomy says beware lest thou forget in the time of blessing. Beware. It warns us of that temptation in the hour, in that temptation in the time of blessing in our life. But I'm telling you this morning, church, it says, it, it, Ephesians tells us there what God wants to do in our lives and what God, Deuteronomy 8 and 10, he says, when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Uh, we need to understand something this morning. He's telling them in the midst of it all, he warns them their danger of in the time of blessing or forgetting, a time of all of this. But Ephesians 5 and 20 says give thanks always did you hear that always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Colossians 3 and 15 let the peace of God let the peace of God rule in your hearts did you hear that word he's talking about what's got to rule what is it that's got control in your heart and in your life he said let the peace of God rule in your heart Hearts, to which also you are called in one body and be thankful right. be thankful practice 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 listen gifts to God must come in love I say gifts to God must come in love I can tell you all actions and offerings should come to God not grudgingly he tells us in 2 Corinthians but he says must each decide in his heart how much to give and don't, don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a person that gives cheerfully amen cheerfully he tells us in 1 Peter 4 says use hospitality one to another without grudging there's a lot of folks that do works, but they complain about it. I said, they do works, but they complain about it. Come on. I'm just telling you what God's telling us this morning, church. The warnings of God and what God wants to see, the blessings to flow in your life. God wants to see the blessings of the Lord flow freely in your life. We've got to practice 
Practice, practice that heart of thanksgiving, singing and music become aid to real worship and praise. That's why we have these that lead us into worship. They get up and they play this music. They sing these songs. Church, I'm telling you, we can turn on the radio and, and turn on the TV on, on trash and it get us overcome, get us down and get us discouraged. Or you can put on those songs that encourage you and bless you. You. I'm telling you the song that says in 69 then I will praise God's name with singing and I'll honor him with thanksgiving. He says in verse 31, this will please the Lord more than sac sacrificing cattle, more than proceeding bull with his horns and hooves. Listen to me church. He says in Psalms 27 now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me therefore I will offer sacrifice of joy in his tabernacle he says I will sing Amen. I never met anybody that didn't like to sing I met a lot of folks that can't sing <laughs> come on I'll tell you I've met folks that could sing and wouldn't sing. And I don't understand it. I tell you, I love to sing. My family don't like for me to sing, but I love to sing. And I tell you, when I get to heaven, I believe God's going to have me on the front row. <laughs> Come on. I said because God only knows, you know, if you can't sing on tune, at least sing louder. Yeah. <laughs> And I got that part down. But you and I need to understand God tells us that singing has a place in our worship to give praise unto the Lord, to give glory unto Him. We need to understand that in our lives, church. He says, I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord because God is good and His mercy endureth forever. We need to understand no matter what you're going through, we need to practice thanksgiving. We need to practice, practice thanksgiving. We've got to get it deep down, church. Thanksgiving is a great sacrifice of offering unto God. Thanksgiving pleases God. Thanksgiving must be a personal relationship church. It must be as a family. It must be as a church. I'm telling you we need to give thanks and we need to let it spread everybody around us because God is good church. Listen, the psalmist says in King James, it says be thou art holy but thou art holy. Oh thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. Yes, amen. That inhabits the praises. I don't know, you know, what is he talking about? He's talking about God in the midst of it. That word inhabits is to occupy as a place of settled residence or habitant to live in. Did you hear that? To be present in or occupy in any manner or form. God wants to live in your praises. God wants to live in that heart that is giving praise and glory. God wants to live and dwell in your life that gives praise. He says he inhabits, he lives in those praises. I don't know about you, but I want my God to live and dwell. I don't want just a visitation, but I want that abiding. I want that living in my heart and in my life. I'm telling you this morning, church, let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving, he says, and declare his words with rejoicing. Come on, somebody. You say, Pastor, I don't know how to talk, but I can tell you, you can sing about it. That amazing grace, how sweet the sound. My God is good this morning. Amen. I want the singers to come to the platform. Psalms 116 says, I will offer to you 
the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. Church, we got to develop a practice system of praise and thanksgiving. Come on. Oh, we talk about the remembering that alphabet, you know, being thankful. What about our abilities? Come on, what about our abilities? What, what about just the blessings of God in our life? What about those things? We can think of, of so many things in our life, church. I can tell you there's, that I mentioned Addie, I mentioned Bill and Cindy, but think about Dorothy and, and Elizabeth and Fred and Jean. Come on, somebody, I hope somebody's thankful for me. Come on, we need to be thankful. We need to remember those around us. We need to begin to thank God for, for Henry and Ingrid and, and Joshua and Kay and Lisa, Melissa, all of these. Uh, come on, just uh, think about those things. You say, Pastor, how can I be thankful? Uh, let that be a guide and maybe help you to begin to think of these things uh, and begin to thank God. Come on, thank God for your children. Call them name by name uh, and give God praise for them. Uh, come on, somebody. We need to begin to have a heart that is thankful and let those around us uh, know, church, uh, oh, El Shaddai, God Almighty, uh, He he is worthy of our praise this morning. My God, church. Ephesians 3 and 20 is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you can think or ask. My God, have we lost that heart of thanksgiving that we need to practice 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 we need to practice and sometimes we need to say well i don't need to be saying that i give god praise because he's good to me come on somebody sometimes we need to bite that tongue sometimes come on somebody what comes up don't have to come out come on i mean god be the glory and the honor let no curse word let no foul language but let that which edifies let that that builds up let that come out of our lips come on somebody give God praise and eyes we need to give him praise every day in every situation that heart of thanksgiving that heart of thanksgiving in our hearts and lives I've learned something over the years my 63 years upon this earth I can go looking for demons and I can find plenty of them. Because they're out there. But I have to remember greater is He. Greater number of angelic beings. God's presence. I can always look for the serpent or I can look for that burning bush. I can always look for the destruction or I can look for the blessing. It's my choice. It's your choice. What are we looking for? I said, what are you looking for? Practice. Practice Thanksgiving. Practice Thanksgiving. And I want to go ahead and give you permission to tell somebody says, oh, you don't need to be saying that. Give God praise. If they get mad with you, tell them the preacher told you to do it. Come on. You and I need to change our hearts and follow after Him and His blessings in our life. Recognize the goodness of the Lord. We serve a good God that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we could even think or ask. That's the kind of God I serve. What about you this morning? Would you bow your heads across this sanctuary this morning? I want to ask you, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ this morning? Do you have
have a relationship with him I'm not going to give account for you I'm going to give an account for Gene Hudson you will give an account for you your actions your words your thoughts the book of Romans tells us that we need to mortify the deeds of this flesh that word mortify speaks of death we need to kill the works of this flesh and let the works of the spirit flow in our lives the Holy Spirit you say pastor I need prayer this morning I want to give my heart and my life to Christ can I see that hand this morning would you let this pastor pray with you I want to give my heart to him you can't leave this place or ever leave this church without this pastor and say he didn't give me a chance I want you to know you can come. He said, whosoever will, let him come. You don't have to be a certain social standard. You don't have to be a part of, of this community. You're a child that God loves. And God says, I love you enough that I gave my life on that cross for you. But he didn't just hang upon that cross. He didn't just die and be buried in a tomb. But he was resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit in his life. That he came out of that tomb, triumphing over death, hell, and the grave. That you and I also might live. Maybe you say, Pastor, I'm a Christian, but I just need prayer this morning. Would you just simply lift that hand up and right back down? Yes, yes, yes. Hands across this sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Would you just lift your hand towards heaven right now and your voices in your face towards heaven this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, singers. Come on, lead us this morning. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. With a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. Jesus, give thanks with a grateful heart. Would you sing it to the Lord this morning? Oh, 